What's up everybody? We're talking about the future of kayak fishing. Where's this sport going? All right, so everybody knows kayak fishing, kayak bass fishing, and kayak bass fishing tournaments in general is a booming sport, uh, ever growing, ever changing. Some of us that have been around a while have seen a lot of trails come and go, uh, trends come and go, seen a lot of the latest game changers and things like that. This sport is still really in its infancy and has a long ways to go. Uh, there's a lot of things that can still change in the future. Who knows what this thing's going to look like 10, 20, 30 years from now. But I'm going to do my, my best, I guess, Randy Blocking impersonation. We're going to get on camera here and talk about where I think it's going and give you my opinion. And I definitely want to hear your stuff in the comments. Uh, help me out and throw that down in the comments and I'll try to respond to, to all that I can see. First, the, the hot topic right now is equipment. Let's talk about where this thing's going from a technology and equipment perspective. You know, it was paddles. You know, everybody started off with a paddle kayak, probably. Uh, then it was paddles versus pedals, and it was pedals and paddles versus motors. Uh, so where, where are we going next from the actual kayak technology standpoint? I think the next shoe to drop is what trail is going to allow multiple motors, a stern mount and a bow mount, or a stern mount and an integrated motor up towards the front. Uh, is there a trail that's going to make the leap or a boat company that's going to make the leap to make that easier and, and integrate it into a boat to have multiple motors on a boat? Or is that gone too far? Years ago, I think many of us would have said pedals have gone too far. Uh, but here we are with, with stern mount, bow mount, and all these different options. So what is going to be the first boat manufacturer or first trail or whatever to allow that technology to take over? And of course, the electronics technology, we have the same talks that we have in the bass fishing world which is should live scope be allowed or not? You know, live scope is probably the tip of the iceberg. Every time we say it can't get any better, something comes out and it gets better. So who knows where that's gonna go. From a rod, reel, and equipment standpoint, I don't wanna get into that. From a straight up kayak fishing technology standpoint, I think we're looking at improved motor technology and integrated accessories on the kayak. Uh, you know, improved options for power poles, improved mounting options, things like that. So with that said, as technology changes and equipment changes, rules are probably going to have to adapt along with it. Will trails, if there's multiple motors on a kayak, will trails allow that? It's already a talk now. I mean, you can obviously rig that up, put multiple motors on a boat, but no trails that I know of allow that right now. Uh, some trails still don't even allow motors at all in actual tournament competition, especially on the highest level. I think for kayak fishing, especially the high level events, to take that next evolution, we're going to have to really clamp down on information gathering rules set practice period rules, uh, off limits period, same difference, I guess. But that's going to be the next evolution is someone to take that serious and really, really implement that on a, on a large scale at a, at a well-respected national tournament trip. So this isn't really, isn't really a rule, but more of a tournament practice. We're going to have to also figure out a way in the future to mitigate cheating more. As money get, gets pushed into this and participation grows in the events, uh, we've got to make sure that everybody feels comfortable that the, that the events themselves, are safe, secure, and there is a, a aura of security around, around you know, you throwing your entry fee and time into set events. So I don't know if that comes from cameras on all boats, improved app technology, or what, but, that, but that's going to have to, to be one of the developments in the future, I think, is a way to mitigate cheaters and, and folks that try to game the system to gain inches, gain clout, whatever the heck they're doing out there. All right, so let's talk about the future of the trails themselves. You know, obviously the big three right now, Hobie BOS at the top, Bassmaster with just the Bassmaster name is right there behind them. And then KBF, who's been around longer than those two as far as trails, but I, but I really don't know what they're doing right now. Uh, let's talk about them all. You know, Hobie has got their open events in TOC. I don't see any reason to mess with that format. The only thing I could see happening in the future with them is changing some of the motor rules. I don't know. I doubt that'll happen anytime soon, but they could change their motor rules. Right now they allow main power only, and then they could be one of the first ones to implement some of these off-limits or pre-fishing uh, rules. The information gathering, I, ho I hope the move on that as well, but I know sometimes tournament directors like to police the least amount of stuff as possible, so maybe that's why that hasn't happened yet there. Uh, bass, all, really, I think Bass has the opportunity to blow up if they would just get the right person to be their kayak czar or kayak guru, whatever you want to call them. They just need to take kayak fishing seriously. They have the media and the logo and the brand name to, to just make it gigantic. But so far, it's kind of been a halfway, it's kind of been a halfway attempt to pull off the kayak fishing side of things. And it could be so, so much better. So we'll see what they do. Uh, if they hire the right guy, I think it could be huge. Or I think Bass could really just do away with kayak fishing tournaments altogether. So what do you all think about that? And then KBF, 
you know, they expanded, they contracted, they expanded, they contracted. Right now, I feel like they're still running kind of a shell game with people with these four and five events on one weekend. Uh, I, I could do a whole other video on how that ends up hurting the sport in the long run when you're selling cities on how many people are actually coming versus how many tickets are sold on Fishing Chaos. Because if 50 people come and you, all, you sell them four tickets each and you tell a city you have 400 entries, you're lying. So uh, I think they need to contract some kind of streamline things. And frankly, rumors are that KBF was being shopped around at ICAST, so maybe they'll be sold and somebody else will, will fix that um, from the ground up. We'll see. But they've been around the longest, and I, I don't know what the future holds for them as far as formats, etc. cetera. Uh, there's some other series that are trying to rise up. I mean, the All-American Series, you know, they got a little too big too fast this year maybe. Kind of hurt some of their attendance, but I know they're going to stick to it and try to keep growing. And then you got the KFL over there, you know, a team fishing league, which is a totally new thing in the fishing world in general. Uh, and they're going through some growing pains too, but who knows what the future holds for them. So what else should we be looking for from trails and leagues and whatever? Um, what do y'all think? Put that in the comments. I think the local trails are going to continue to thrive. That's not going to change. But on, on a regional, national scale, what do y'all see coming down the pipe? But that's my quick snapshot of the future of kayak fishing and what we're, what we're looking at and what we ought to be looking for. Appreciate you guys as always for watching. Hit that subscribe and notification before you get out of here.